Hi everybody. So today we'll talk about circulating charged particle inside the magnetic field region. So we assume that there is a region with uniform magnetic field. The field is uniform. Uniform B. And in the first case, we'll assume that we have a charged particle Q and the velocity vector is perpendicular to B. All right, so I need to draw the velocity vector. Let's say it's in this direction. How the particle will move? So we need to know where is the direction of the force. So you apply right hand rule. Don't forget that B is shown by cross here. So it means that the arrow is into the plan. Okay, so when an arrow go away from you, you may see a cross. So V cross B with your right hand rule, you will see that is upward. And I will assume that the charge is positive. Okay, so the force is, is vertical. So, so the, the particle will move like this. We have upward force, velocity to the right. So the particle will move in this direction. Let's assume it will arrive here and the velocity vector is vertical like that. Where is the force now? Well, V cross B, so it gives you a force like this. So it means that the particle will move in this direction. Now I will draw again velocity vector like that, following the path. Where is the force? Right hand rule tell me that the force is downward this time. So the particle will deviate down. And here the velocity vector is down. Where is the force? Well, Right hand rule tell you that the force is like this. So the particle will deviate to the right this time. And it will continue like that. So the motion seems to be circular. Indeed, it's uniform circular motion. So I give you a link in the video in which you can see that in an experiment showing a charged particle, which are electron beam, inside the magnetic field, and you see that the motion is really circular. So it's a uniform circular motion. It means we have a circle, but also the speed is constant. And the motion is in the plan perpendicular to B. Remember, we choose that V perpendicular to B, so the particle will stay in this plan, which is a plan perpendicular to B. So, what are the characteristics of this circle or circular motion? Well, we'll apply Newton's law, force equal MA. How is the force? The force is toward the center. So, it's a centripetal force. So we have a centripetal force and we have a centripetal acceleration. So the force, what is it? QVB sine 90 degree because V and B are perpendicular. So that's just one. Is equal to what? M centripetal acceleration is V square over R. R is the radius, basically. So from that, you can get QB equal MV over R. Very important formula. So what are the characteristics of this motion? We need to know the radius of the circle, the radius. R, so we did use it just from this formula, is equal to what? M V over QB. 
angular frequency. Omega, which is V over R, so it's equal to what? QB over M. The frequency of the motion, F, that's just this over 2 pi, so QB over 2 pi M. And the period, period of revolution. T is just the inverse of the frequency, so that's 2 pi m over qb. If you have a look at this characteristic, we see that the radius depends on velocity. But angular frequency, the frequency and the period, doesn't depend on the frequency. Do not depend or end dependent on velocity, on sorry, the speed. So if you change the speed here of the particle, if you change the speed of the particle, you can change the radius, but you will not change the period. The period is the time for the particle to come back to the same point. All right, so here we assumed that the motion is uniform circular motion. So circular, we can guess it from the drawing, but why V is constant? Why V is constant? That's not trivial. To prove that, I will use what we call kinetic energy work theory. So the variation of kinetic energy from two points, let's say I assume that the particle move from this point to this point, what is the variation of kinetic energy? So the variation of the kinetic energy is equal to the work of all forces, that's from mechanics, the only force that we are using here is the magnetic force. And this, the work is given by the integral of F dS. You integrate on the path the, for, the, the scalar product force with displacement. What is the velocity vector? But just the displacement over time. So I will use that here. So we have F dot ds, I can write it by f dot v dt, ds just v dt. But what is the scalar product between the force, the magnetic force, and the velocity? That's just zero. Why? Because the force is perpendicular to v. So this is zero, so this is zero. So what we have demonstrated here that delta k is zero. The variation of kinetic energy is zero. So the kinetic energy, which is half mv square, is constant. So what we did use, that v is constant. Okay, so this is an extra, just to show you why the speed is constant. Let's have a look now to the second case. So the first case, it was V perpendicular to B, but the general case, V is just a vector like that, and B is oriented upward. So they are not perpendicular to each other. So what will happen? So if there is just perpendicular velocity, if the charge is moving in this direction, so this is the first case, the charge will have a circular motion in a plane perpendicular to B. So, V perpendicular, what it will give me? It gives me uniform circular motion in a plane perpendicular to B. Okay? Now, let's assume that the sh there, is, there is just V parallel, so the charge is moving along B which kind of motion I will have. So if the charge is moving along B, velocity vector is parallel to B, there is no force on this particle, so the charge will continue with the same velocity. So it's uniform linear motion 
along B. If you combine these two motion, what you will get? You will get a helical part shown here. So that's the helical part. The particle is circulating in plan perpendicular to B and it's moving upward in the, along B. So what are the characteristics of this motion? We have frequency, period, angular frequency, the same equation as in the first case, as in first case. Why is that? Well, because frequency period and angular frequency doesn't depend on doesn't depend on velocity. So if you change the direction of velocity, it doesn't matter. What about the radius? Well, the radius will have similar equation. The radius of this helical part, so that's R. So R is equal to what? M V over Q B, not the total V, but V perpendicular. Why V perpendicular? Because that's the one that gives me circular motion. And now there is another characteristic, another new characteristic, which is the pitch. P. What is P? Well, when the particle moves during one period, it will move along B a distance P. What is P? So there's a distance along B during one period, and that's just velocity times time. Which velocity? Parallel velocity, that's the velocity along B. The time of one revolution, that's just the period. We stop here. Thank you for watching. See you in my next video.